Blessed the kingdom, the Father, the Son of the Holy Spirit, now and ever and forever. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For peace from high, for the salvation of our souls, let us pray to the Lord. For peace in all the world, for the stability of the holy churches of God, and for the union of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy church and for all who enter with faith, reverence, and fear of God, let us pray to the Lord. For our Holy Father, Francis Poporom, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our most reverend Metropolitan William Praga, Lord, Bishop Milan, for the Venerable Presbyter and the Diacon in Christ, and all the clergy and people, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our government and for all in the service of our country, let us pray to the Lord. Lord for this city, for every city, community, and for the faithful living in them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this city, for every city, community, and for the faithful living in them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For a favorable weather, for the months of the fruits of the earth, and for peaceful times, let us pray to the Lord. Lord for those who travel by sea or on land, for the sick that suffer in the captive, and for their salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For that we be delivered from all affliction, rise and need, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Protect us, save us, have mercy on us, and preserve us, O God, by your grace. Lord, Commemorating the most holy, most pure, most blessed and glorious Lady, that the Otokos and the Virgin Mary, with all the saints, let us come ourselves and one another, and our whole life to Christ our God. To you, O Lord. O Lord our God, mighty beyond description, glorious of understanding, merciful without limits, loving us all beyond expression, look with compassion on us and this Holy Church of Master and show us in those who pray with us riches your tender mercy. For to you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, your glory, honor, worship, now and ever, and forever. Amen. Shout joyfully to the Lord, all the earth, sing praise to his name, give to him glory, praise through the prayers of the Theotokos. Oh, Savior, save us. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, Spirit now and ever and forever. Amen. Through the prayers of the Theotokos. Oh, Gracious to us, O God, and bless us. Let your face shine upon us and have mercy on us. O Son of God, risen from the dead, save us who sing to you. Alleluia. <coughs> Glory to the Father to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever and forever. Amen. O only begotten Son and Word of God, who will be
wisdom of beatanti. Now and ever and forever. Let us be attentive, peace be to all of wisdom, be attentive. How many are your works, O Lord, in wisdom you have made them all, in wisdom you have made them all. Bless the Lord. 
Lord, my soul. Lord God, how great you are. The just man will rejoice in the Lord. Rejoice in the Lord. And will put his trust in him. Wisdom on. Let us be attentive. Brethren, my heart's desire, my prayer to God for the Israelites is that they may be saved. Indeed, I can testify that they are zealous for God, though their zeal is unenlightened unaware of God's justice and seeking to establish their own. They did not subject themselves to the justice of God. Christ is the end of the law. Through him, justice comes to everyone who believes. Moses writes of the justice that comes from the law. The one who observes the law shall live by it. But of the justice that comes from faith, he says, Do not say in your heart, Who shall go up into heaven? That is, to bring Christ down. Or, Who shall go down into the abyss? That is, to bring Christ up from the dead. What is it he does say? The word is near you, on your lips and in your heart. That is, the word of faith which we preach. For if you confess with your lips that Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Faith in the heart leads to justification. Confession on the lips to salvation. Peace be to your reader, wisdom be attentive. Let us stand and listen to the Holy Gospel. Peace be to all. And to your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel. According to St. Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Glory to you. Oh, let us be attentive. At that time, as Jesus approached the gathering boundary, he encountered two men coming out of the tombs. They were possessed by demons and were so savage, so that no one could travel along that road. With a sudden shriek, they cried, Why meddle with us, Son of God? Have you come to torture us before the appointed time? Some distance away, a large herd of wine, swine was feeding. The demons kept appealing to him. If you expel us, send us into the herd of swine. Jesus answered, out with you. And the day came forth and entered the swine. The whole herd went rushing down the bluff into the sea and were drowned. 
The swine herds took to their heels and upon their arrival in the town related everything that had happened, including the story about the two possessed men. The upshot was that the, the entire town, town came out to meet Jesus. When they caught sight of him, they begged him to leave their neighborhood. Glory to Jesus Christ. One priest from Slovakia, he posted on Facebook some kind of his experience. He had one man to, he asked him to give his testimony about conversion in his life. In, in the after a liturgy in the church, and it was a Roman Catholic church, filled a lot of people there, I don't know how many, but it's a big parish. And this man agreed and he gave a really very powerful testimony about his way from bad life to life to Christ. And this priest saw, he wrote, I saw people crying in the pews. I saw people who were moved by this, this story. A lot of people told me that how it was powerful for them, how this story touched them, this testimony. And he said, well, this was on Sunday. And I was waiting whole week, but nobody came to me with desire, what can I do to change my life because I want to have the same life as that man has. And he said, this is how we live now. We are touched and we are pleased when we see those things, when we hear those things about this return, this conversion, about this heroic things which some people do because they found that Christ can heal them and give them new life. But we are touched and moved, but we don't do the same. And I think that this is a little bit true. Not a little bit, this is really true. Because we want to keep our own life we want to keep life as it is. And many times Christ comes to us through many occasions. And Christ comes to us and he says, well, just his presence can heal us. And we can see as those people from that land who could see that those dangerous, possessed men were healed and they got real life, we can see this and hear these testimonies around us, but we act like those people there. We ask Christ to live. Many times, you know, it's, we know, and it's reminded to us so many times that the prayer is, is way how to receive grace and to come closer to, to Christ. But, well, many times evening, you know, if this thought comes to our mind, we tell the thought which came from Christ, well, not today, I'm too tired, go away. We know what is right, what is God command, but we say to Christ, if this thought comes, not because I have different plans. I have to do it differently and we send him away. We know what is right, what is correct, we know and understand gospel, 
But if it comes to real life, we tell him, go away because it is not comfortable to do it for me because, because it means sacrifice. And then we are losing something what we should have. We are losing this, really this sharpness of our lives which attracts others to come to Christ. And if we are so weak, how people who don't have what we have, how weak they can happen. How many, we don't realize how people who are without God, how they depend on us. Because without that, life, those, who are without Christ go crazy, goes crazy. Some kind of reporter, a man who works for a newspaper, he made a documentary movie and he visited three states in Europe, Finland, Germany, and Holland. And what was the purpose? He was trying to find out what is a level of religious life in those three countries. Wow, it was very sad what he found. It was very sad what he commented. And then in the end, he said, no wonder that whole world goes crazy if this world lost support of Christians. And this is true. And we have to admit that we, many times we are so open even, not only to our way of life, that, uh, to this ignorance of these advices which Christ has given us. And not only that, that we are even open to heresies which we put to our life. So many bad way of thinking about spiritual life, about life with Christ is in our head, which causes that we are losing even goal of our life, meaning of our life. Let me tell you, I remind you, only one heresy. I call it heresy because it is. Look, what you can hear around yourself. Or uh, if somebody dies, what can you hear? Surely the man or this woman goes to heaven because it was a good person. It was a good person. What is good person? What is good? We, many times we think that it is enough to do some good things and heaven is open. That God must accept this person because this person gave 20 bucks to homeless person or he helped family or he helped friend or he was kind to his children or he was kind to his friends. Sure. God must receive him to eternal life. But it's not teaching of gospel. Because if good deeds would open our, for us heaven, then we would not need Christ to come on this earth. There is no reason for Christ to become man and to, for our salvation. There is no need for cross. His sacrifice would be meaningless if good deeds opened doors for, our, for heaven. And if you cannot find it in the gospel. You cannot find it in scripture. What is true is that that one who believes in him has eternal life. 
who believes in him has eternal life. This is teaching gospel. But you know what we say? Oh, it's fine. It's good person. You know. So then if we have this attitude, it doesn't matter to which church we are going. If you're going to true or to Orthodox Church, I mean, which teaches good teaching, or it goes to church founded by a man who teaches what they want, or we go nowhere, everything is fine because we are a good person. Then, then we don't need church, we don't need Christ, we don't need anybody, and especially what is good. We are putting these rulers. It seems to me that it is good. It seems to me, I feel that this is good, so it is good and God must accept that. But many times it is good because we see it through our pride, through our lack of knowledge, we consider things good. You know, and they are not really good. Good things in the Christian faith are those things, good deeds are those deeds which comes out from keeping of commandments. Deeds, what I do because I keep commandments, those are good deeds. Others not. If I do things before because of Christ, because of my faith, if my deeds are byproduct of my faith, then it is good. And they have value. And they are important. But look, and this is only one of many heresies which are in our mind. Which we say many times. We act according to these heresies. And it is no wonder that we don't try, we don't try to love Christ. This is why we send him away so easily. You know how many times it is that there is like feast during big days. And we say, no, I don't go. Because it's not my habit to come to a church during big days. We send Christ away. We don't go because, well, I have another plans. I would need to reschedule something. Or we prefer many other things and we don't come. We say that we love Christ, but church is empty. We say that we love Christ, but we don't use each opportunity to be with him. Can you see this hypocrisy? But it is not bad intention. We have to just to be reminded of that. Because through time, we were led by these heresies. If this heresy that it's enough to be a good person, it's enough to, to go to heaven, it leads to this that I don't need Christ anymore. I don't need him. I'm a good person. He will take me to heaven. It is not true. Heaven is a relationship with Christ. How I love him in this measure, how I love him in this measure, I will get eternal life. But we can say, well, this is a huge criticism, and it is, and we need to be reminded by that. Because we have to change this. How can we change this? How can we change this, this state where our faith, our Christianity, in Western civilization, went so down to lowest almost point? How can we change this? And today we celebrate Feast of St. John the Baptist, and we know what happened. John Baptist came to prepare very for Christ. He came to Jews who had scriptures, 
who were taught by prophets, who were told about everything, who got rules for life, who got commandments from God, who got everything God could prepare given to people at the time to prepare them for Christ. For, for salvation. But John the Baptist had to come and to remind them what is true. To be, to give this testimony of Christ, to prepare a way. Why prepare a way? Because they slide down. And they lost understanding of the law. They didn't understand and, and they didn't want. And what they, he did, he was baptizing them, Jews, in a sign of repentance, changing of life. And he was tough. And he said truth. He reminded what is coming. And we need for today, for this time, all church needs again these prophets. To start to listen to these prophets which calls us back, which calls and they show us what is heresy in our life, what is bad understanding of our relationship with God, what is bad understanding of the church, of, of purpose of our life. We need to hear these prophets again. But, you know, God is not going to send another prophet like John the Baptist. He was the last one because everything was fulfilled. But we do have prophets we can listen. Look around yourself. Each the saint is prophet for us. Each the saint gives us testimony through their life, how we should live. And we have wonderful, holy teachers who teach us how to live our relationship with God. They teach clearly. And we should listen to them because they can change our life. We started, maybe many of you know, and there's a lot of people who come on Mondays, this study, it's not study book, it's, it's formation. And we go very slowly because we want to go to depth to study what about our spiritual life. And I could see in the beginning that many were like shaken because it was really tough, but it's true. This is true, we don't play on emotions, excitement, or good feelings. We are learning about truth, how to live our faith, how to be with Christ. But, you know, I told in the first, when we had first meeting, this book, this teaching will change your life. And during the last month, I think it was three people who reminded me that. They told me, you said this and it is true. And I can see that it is true. Well, this is way for us. We all have to return back to sources. We have to put to the trash these are mindsets, these are way how we think about God, about our spiritual life, about our relationship with God. And we should be renewed by true teaching and be willing to follow it. Then we will have power and we will not have courage to send Christ away when he comes to heal us when he comes to change our lives, when he comes with his grace, we will take it because we will know that it is something great and good for our lives. Amen.
Let us all say with our soul, mind, our soul, mind, soul, and with our whole mind, let us say. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God of our fathers, we pray you hear and have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Have mercy on us, O God, according to your great mercy, we pray you hear and have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. <laughs> Again, we pray for Holy Father Francis Popo Romer, for our most reverend Metropolitan William for God, and Bishop Milan, for those who serve and have served in Holy Church, for our spiritual fathers and for our brothers and sisters in Christ. Lord, have <laughs> mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. Again, we pray for our government and for all in the service of our country. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. Again, we pray for the people present who have made you great abundant mercy for those who have mercy and for all Christians of the true faith. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord. For you are merciful, loving God, and we give glory to you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and ever and forever. our Holy Father, Francis Poporom, our most reverend Metropolitan William, our God, Lamy Bishop Milan, and the interpriestly diacono monastic order, our government and all in the service of our country, and the ever memorable founders and benefactors of this Holy Church. May the Lord God remember all you Christians of the true faith, always, now and ever, and forever. Precious gives place before us. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Grant His real mercy, only begotten Son, with me, us together with your all holy, good, and life creating Spirit, now and ever and forever. Amen. Peace be to all. And to your spirit. Oh, 
let us love one another that with one mind we may propose. The doors, the doors in wisdom, let us be attentive. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, the only begotten, born of the Father before all. Begotten, not made, one in essence with the Father, through whom all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, and was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became man. He was crucified for us under Pontius Pilate. And suffered and was buried. He rose on the third day according to the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. And he is coming again in glory to judge the living and the dead. And his kingdom will have no end. And in the Holy Spirit. The Lord, the creator of life, who proceeds from the Father. Together with the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He spoke through the prophets in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I profess one baptism for the remission of sin. I expect the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Oh, let us stand right, last and you all let us be attentive to all for the holy night for I'm peace. Mercy, peace, a sacrifice of praise. In the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and love of God and Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit. Be with all of you. And with your spirit. Oh, let us lift up our hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Oh, let us give thanks to the Lord. It is proper and just. It is proper and just to sing to you, bless you, to praise you, to thank you, to worship you, and replace your dominion for your God in a inconceivable and visible and comprehensible, ever existing and ever same, you and your only begotten Son, your Holy Spirit. You brought us out of non existence into being again, raised us up when we had fallen, left nothing undone until you brought us to heaven and gave us your kingdom to come. For all this we thank you, your only begotten Son, your Holy Spirit, for all that we know and that we do not know. For the manifest and the benefits bestowed on us, we also thank you for this liturgy which you are pleased to accept from our hands. Even though there stand before you thousands of archangels, tens of thousands of angels, cherubim and seraphim, six winged, many eyes soaring out on their wings, singing, shouting, crying aloud, and saying the triumphal hymn of. Comes in the name 
we also cry out with these blessed powers, loving kindness, and say, Holy are you, and all holy you, and your only begotten Son, and your Holy Spirit. Holy are you, and all holy magnificent is your glory. You so loved your world that you gave your only begotten Son, so that everyone who believes in him should not perish, but have life everlasting. He came and fulfilled the whole divine plan in our behalf. On the night he was betrayed, or rather, when he surrendered himself for the life of the world, he took bread into his holy and all pure immaculate hands, gave thanks and blessed, sanctified, broke, and gave it to his holy disciples and apostles, saying, Take it, this is my body which is broken for you, for the remission of sins. Amen. Likewise, he took the chalice after supper, saying, Drink of this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the remission of sins. Remembering therefore the saving command when all this come to pass in our behalf, the cross, the tomb, the resurrection on the third day, the ascension into heaven, the sin at the right hand, and the second coming glory. Offering you your own from your own, always and everywhere. We praise you, we bless you, we thank you, O Lord, we thank you, O Lord, and we pray to you, and we pray to you, our Moreover, we offer to you this spiritual and unbody sacrifice, and we implore, pray, and treat you. Send down your Holy Spirit upon us and upon these gifts lying before us, and make this bread the precious body of your Christ. And that which is in this shell is the precious body of your Christ, changing them by your Holy Spirit. Therefore, those who partake of them, they may bring about the spirit of vigilance, the remission of sins, the communion of your Holy Spirit, the fullness of the heavenly kingdom and confidence in you, not judgment or condemnation. Moreover, we offer the spiritual sacrifice for those departing faith, the forefathers, fathers, patriarchs, prophets, apostles, preachers, evangelists, martyrs, confessors, ascetics, and for which the spirit brought to perfection in faith. Especially from most holy, most pure, most blessed and glorious lady, the Theotokos and the Virgin Mary. Among the first, O Lord, remember, Holy Father, Francis Poporom, our most reverend Metropolitan William, our God, loving Bishop Milan, preserve them for your holy churches in peace, safety, honor, health for many years, as they faithfully impart the word of your truth. And remember all your people. And grant that with one voice and one heart we may glorify and praise your most honored and magnificent name, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Now and ever and forever. Amen. May the mercies of our great God and Savior Jesus Christ be with all of you. And with your spirit. Now that we have commemorated all the saints again and again in peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the precious gifts offered, consecrated our God, who loves us all, may I receive this holy, heavenly, mystical altar as our most spiritual fragrance, and send down upon us in return His divine grace and the gift of the Holy Spirit. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy. 
Jesus. Most given for unity in the faith and the communion of the Holy Spirit, all let us commit our souls and one another and our whole life to Christ our God. To you, o Lord. And make us worthy, O Master, that we may with confidence and without condemnation dare call you Father, God of heaven and Son. Thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and ever and forever. Amen. Peace be to all. And to your spirit. And bow your heads to the Lord. To you, Lord. And we give you thanks, O invisible King, for by measurable power you have patient all things and greatest mercy over all things of non existence into being. Look down from heaven, O man, upon those who bow their heads to you, for they do not bow to flesh and blood, but to you, dear Son God. Therefore, O Master, make smooth the good of all the paths that lies ahead according to the need of each. Sail with those who sail, travel with those who travel, cure those who are sick of physicians, of souls and bodies. Through the grace, the mercy, and loving kindness, your only begotten Son, which we are blessed together with your all holy, good, and life creating Spirit, now and ever and forever. Amen. Let us be attentive. Holy gifts to holy people. One is holy, one is Lord, Lord Jesus Christ, to the glory of God the Father. Amen. Oh Lord, I believe.
Approach with fear of God and with faith. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. The Lord is come, and has revealed himself to us. O Jesus Lord, we ask you to pray.
Save your people, God, and bless your inheritance. We have seen the true <coughs> light. We have received a heavenly spirit. We have found the true faith, and we worship the undivided the Trinity for the Trinity. Blesses our God always, now and ever, and forever. Amen. May our mouth be filled with your praise, O Lord, so that we may sing of your glory, sing of your glory. that we have received the divine, holy, most pure, immortal, heavenly life, creating all some mysteries of Christ. Let us worthily thank the Lord. Lord mercy. For you are our sanctification. We give glory to you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and ever and forever. Amen. Let us go forth in peace. In the name of the Lord. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. Lord, blessing those who bless you and sanctify those who trust in you, save your people and bless your inheritance. Preserve the fallen of your church, sanctify those who love the beauty of your house, glorify them, return by your divine power, and do not forsake us who hope in you. Grant peace, your world, to your church is a priest to our government. And to all your people, for all generous, given and ever perfect, give this from above, coming down from the Father of lights, and we give glory, thanksgiving, worship to you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and ever, and forever. of the Lord be upon you through his grace, loving kindness, always, now and ever, and forever. Amen. Glory to you, O Christ God, our hope. Glory to you. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever and forever. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, give the blessing. May Christ, our true God, risen from the dead, have mercy on us and save us through the praise of his most pure mother, of the, of the honorable and glorious prophet, for honor, Baptist of the Lord John, whose nativity we gloriously celebrate today. Through the prayers of our Holy Father, John Christo, Archbishop of Constantinople, our Holy Father, and the cause the patron of this church, and through the prayers of all the saints, for Christ is good and loves us all. Amen. Glory to Jesus Christ. Thank you for beautiful liturgy. Thank you. you came to worship our Lord. Just really very fast, few reminders. 
we have um, a piece of St. Paul, Peter and Paul, it will be a vigil, divine liturgy. It's obligation feast, you know, I don't like to use that because each feast should be obligation or because if you love Christ, everything is obligation for us. And there will be no liturgy on Saturday evening because morning is intronization and uh, it looks like uh, I'm going to be very busy on afternoon that I will not be able to serve the liturgy. Um, Sunday is normal liturgy, maybe with a little surprise. I cannot tell more now. I would like to wish happy birthday to Ivan Demian. Uh, happy birthday, God bless you. To Robert Habas, happy birthday. To Jean C, happy birthday. May God bless you. Thank you for everything you do for church. To Bola Bokaisa and to Rose Gill and happy anniversaries, wedding anniversaries to the Jajik family, to the Sanders family, they always find reason not to be here. You know, when the, it's something going on like that. No, oh, there are so like 10th anniversary, so they went celebrate out of it. And to the Janusz's family. Read the bulletin, thank you for very much for all those who prepared these last Sundays, like celebration of Father's Day, and those who finished schools. Thank you very much. It was a lot of work and very nice. It was a very nice prepared event. Read the bulletin. Everything is there. Two servants of God. Yvonne, Robert, Jean, Bella, Rose, to share the servants of God, the Jajik, Sanders, and Janosch's family, to servants of God, all members of this parish, and to all our visitors, grant, O oh Lord, many years. 